Thank you. Uh, so yeah, I'll be presenting uh, my work out of the Lisa Kanafagi's lab um, at Columbia University, um, looking at you know, transcranial imaging of acoustic cavitation. So we've uh, saw or seen a lot of good talks uh, showing the potential of BB opening focus ultrasound. And so moving into the clinical setting, uh, we can envision uh, certain phases uh, leading to opening the bulbing barrier, which includes planning, targeting, treatment and monitoring, and confirmation of the BB opening. And so for my talk, I want to focus on the uh, targeting and the monitoring aspect uh, of this technique. And the emerging technologies, um, as we've seen throughout the day, uh, MRI um, is great. Uh, MRI guided focus ultrasound um, is great for targeting with the high resolution MRI images. And also you have the ability to then confirm the blood brain barrier opening um, after the treatment um, using contrast enhancement. Um, but it currently lacks um, a monitoring technique, which uh, we typically use acoustic uh, cavitation based monitoring. Um, and then as we saw in the previous talk, a new technique uh, that's been, uh, been used recently is a neuronavigation guided focus ultrasound, uh, which you can get the good targeting. Uh, but again, it lacks a monitoring technique and uh, doesn't really have the ability to confirm opening, uh, but a, uh, a post MRI scan isn't uh, out of the question to confirm where the opening's at. And so for this talk, um, I wanted to focus on the monitoring aspect by developing a transcranial ultrasound imaging technique for high resolution imaging of cavitation um, during the uh, sonication with microbubbles. And so for our system, we developed the ultrasound guided focus ultrasound uh, set up uh, using an image array in the central opening of a focus ultrasound transducer. So the imaging array we used was a GE probe at 2.5 megahertz. And then we have a focus ultrasound transducer at 0.5 megahertz from Sonic Concepts, uh, which has a fairly small focal size of roughly a centimeter axially and a couple of millimeters laterally. And then we were using uh, throughout the this, these experiments, short pulses of focus ultrasound. It's only a couple, of few, a few cycles. Um, so the idea is we operate the imaging array in a passive mode, and we use the focus ultrasound pulses to interrogate the bubbles in the beam path, and then use the imaging array to receive those emissions in beam form uh, where the bubbles are at in our focus. And so this is just imaging like a microbubble bath that has microbubbles freely floating in suspension. Um, you can see you're able to localize the individual microbubbles um, in the focal area as they flow through. And if we kind of quantify the point spread function uh, resolution of this image, um, we, kind of, we get good resolution, about 1.3 millimeters laterally and uh, 0.4 millimeters axially. And so then we extended this technique um, into an uh, imaging mode we call power cavitation imaging, which is analogous to power Doppler imaging, where we can acquire a stack of these images um, at either low frame rates or high frame rates. And then on each pixel, we can uh, apply spatiotemporal clutter filtering techniques. Um, so to remove slow moving tissue motion in between uh, consecutive uh, cavitation images, and we can isolate the fast rapidly moving cavitation activity in between uh, images using a filtering technique mainly used for uh, Doppler imaging. And then, and then we can uh, sum up these images or calculate the mean intensity, uh, which we call the power cavitation image. So you can clearly see you're able to resolve out uh, basically the focal um, volume or sort of focal area of the focus uh, with good resolution. And so for our NHB experiments, uh, we would then uh, take our transducer and put it in a water filled cone, and we would uh, use a Verisonics uh, research ultrasound system to basically synchronize our focused ultrasound transmit with the imaging array. And so then you can also see the orientation of our uh, transducer relative to the monkey skull in the middle. And then just for uh, visualization, I simulated the pressure field and overlaid on the MRI. Uh, so we were trying to target the hippocampus um, deep in the, the uh, NHP's uh, brain. And then so our parameters uh, are the same. Um, for these experiments, we were just ramping uh, the pressures from 0 0.1 uh, to 1 megapascal. Um, we were using Definity at uh, five times the clinical dose. And then, so we would do 100 transmits at each pressure, which is equivalent to 100 frames um, to create our power cavitation image. And so this is just uh, showing the orientation of the transducer relative to the brain and our B mode, which is so you can see the outline and curvature of the, the skull. And so if we do our cavitation images, so this is doing no SVD filtering. Uh, so as you can see, we ramp up the pressure. So we can see a uh, bubble activity at the focus at roughly 60 to 65 millimeters. But you also can see that you kind of get swamped by a lot of uh, uh, signal near the skull and uh, tissue interface. Um, but so you can see that if we apply the SVD filter, we're able to kind of get rid of that um, uh, clutter essentially in the image and localize our focal activity um, down at roughly 65 millimeters 
um, and kind of clean up the image. But we also see activity kind of along the, the brain surface um, and pre-focally. And then lastly, uh, we can overlay uh, this image onto our MRI. Um, and you can see kind of where the focus is expected to be. We see significant activity um, in the region of uh, we expect. And so finally, we can uh, quantify by defining certain ROIs in our image. Um, and with, so the red here, red curve here is denoting uh, with the SVD filtering, and the blue here is without. And so you can see as we increase the pressure, we can uh, basically improve the image quality um, by using the SVD filtering, which is mainly we hypothesize due to suppressing uh, the tissue and clutter artifact we get from the skull, which basically we get this large reflection back that we uh, shows up as a stationary uh, signal in our image. So to con conclude, um, so we feel like power captation imaging is able to provide a good resolution uh, to localize where bubbles are at um, in our therapeutic beam in the brain, and we can use ultra-fast imaging techniques to kind of improve these images um, to predict where our microbial activity is at and therefore where our opening is at. Um, and so we envision kind of using uh, the B mode in conjunction with the power captation image and our MRI-based neuronavigation coordinates to basically uh, predict and understand where we're going to get opening at based on you know, where we think the focus is at and where we're seeing activity at in the brain. And then in future, we hope to use this imaging mode to basically do like a cavitation dose um, so we can do this imaging over time and actually get the reopening um, and then correlate these images with um, the MRI-based BB opening image and see if that, this type of image is a predictor of where we have opening. And with that, I'll take any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions from the audience? So when you're imaging through the skull, how do you account for the aberration affecting your ability to actually see where things are in space for the two and a half megahertz? Mm -hmm. so, so we think, yeah, um, transmit, we feel like the beam isn't too distorted, um, maybe a few millimeters. Uh, but on receive, we're not doing any sort of correction as of right now. Um, but yeah, we need to look into what we would expect in terms of a, a shift in localizing the source. Um, but we feel like it's not, a, you know, we're able to localize the microbial sources with, um, we don't really know what the degradation is due to the skull and shifting, if it's millimeters or actually like shifting it to like centimeters. But we feel it's not that, that big of a, a shift to actually like, you know, make us think there's cavitation somewhere or there's not. Uh, but yeah, we need to look into applying, which we can with the phased array, um, and we have the ability to correct possibly for any sort of aberration. But it seems like the attenuation at least isn't a huge deal, and we can detect down to you know, pretty low pressures the levels still. Hi, Mark. Nice talk. I, I just have a question. Do you have any way with, the, with this method to, to uh, say whether there is a stable cavitation or an aerosol cavitation taking place, or any way to define or determine these thresholds? So, so basically, I think of it, uh, you know, so we're doing short pulses, so it's kind of like a transient response from the bubble. So I think what we're imaging is, uh, you know, we're causing the bubble to grow and collapse. You know, maybe not grow in terms of the huge expansions, but you know, subtle expansions where we get a collapse spike or imaging that higher frequency emission. Uh, so I mainly think it's transient cavitation, but not in the sense that it's full-blown inertial that, you know, is you know, fragmenting the bubble and causing excessive damage. So I think it's more like high energy, like stable sort of cavitation. Uh, did you guys do any histology following these sonications to see if there's any damage to the brains? Yes, yeah, so actually for uh, all these experiments, there was no opening. Um, so kind of in this regime of using short pulses was different from uh, our lab. We've previously been using long pulses. Um, so I've been trying to then do BB open experiments with these short pulses. So for all these experiments, I didn't see any opening um, or damage by T2 um, images. So I'm still working to get opening and with these images. Great. Thank you.